you know, I thought Philip Clark was actually very reasoned in the way he accepted what had gone on in the past it wasn't good enough. I thought the way he said he wanted to work and form partnerships was very revealing. But for me, it's the fact that having had the Horsegate scandal, having seen consumers' trust lost, I think if Philip Clark had come here and said what he said and not mean it, that would be remarkable. So I'm of the mind to say, we'll take you up on your offer. We want to be your supplier of choice, and this is a great opportunity for British agriculture. I, I think it, as an industry as a whole, uh, there's a bit of a change in the way that we're looking at supply chains, and they are linking up a bit in, for Tesco, for the grain market, for everything. And uh, it, it, it's a sort of symptom of that. Um, it's not just about price so much anymore. It's, it's about consistency of supply and being able to deliver it. And were you convinced by what Philip Clark said? Did you believe him? Yes, I, I believe it. He's not doing it for our benefit, he's doing it for his benefit, but there is a chance that it will benefit us as well. Yeah, and I think I tend to echo those thoughts that Will said, but I do think um, he's been very clever, Tesco has been very clever in actually picking out the uh, poultry sector, particularly the meat sector. It's probably the easiest just because of product consistency, product quality, to roll forward that sort of supply chain commitment quite quickly. Um, he, he did mention they were, have ambitions to roll it out for other protein sources, but clearly the beef sheep sectors are a lot more difficult to get product consistency and consistent supply and stuff that they're really after, I guess. They want to see the results. I mean, basically, our members have coped extremely well with hugely rising beef prices. So if the, if the issue here is price, they'll ride with the market and make it work.